Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, I'm out walking today and I'm going to describe for you what I'm looking at. Now, for those of you who are doing exams, uh, descriptions are really important. But the problem is, I think many of you just describe things in terms of size and color and you don't really get inside the mood of the thing and uh, in order to demonstrate how good your English is you really need to be looking at things from the inside out not from the outside looking in one example of that is if you're describing a room you don't say The room is large, the room is brown, the room is square, the room is horizontal. You'd have to be a little bit more in touch with what the room could be used for. You have to speculate. You have to show people what it reminds you of. You have to give them the bigger picture. As I was saying a few days ago, And I can't remember which podcast it was or which video clip, but I was saying a few days ago, you know, if I ask you to describe your mobile phone, would you say it is square, it is black, it has buttons on the side? No, you probably wouldn't. You would immediately tell me about the apps and what it does and how much joy you get from it and how... You know, it has these apps on there that you can use to communicate with people. So you really have to just get into the mood of describing. And I know a lot of you, um, when you start to describe things, you just go into student mode. You're afraid to be natural. You immediately start saying things like, oh, let me use my basic words. It is square. It is round. And, uh, yeah, you really need to just be thinking, well, what would I do in my own language if I was asked this? What would that look like? Well, anyway, I'm going to describe what I'm seeing. So I'm, I'm on a street. It's very green because summer's here. And there are lots of hedge on either side. Um, there's cars parked as well. Everyone seems to be at home today. There's loads of cars on the streets. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the time of day. But it's still quite early, so there's loads of cars. I can hear children playing in the local school just behind these houses. That's something I haven't heard in a long time. I remember when I was a little boy, you know, the noise we used to make in schools... And I also remember when I was living in Spain, oh, those kids know how to make noise. You know, all the schools have really large walls around them, and the kids, they know how to play, my goodness. Um, And, of course, Arabia is the same. (laughs) Kids really do whatever they want, you know. So, uh, let me see, yeah. Um, What else do we have? Well, we have the usual things, traffic lights. I can see the train tracks as well. Trains are whizzing past in the distance. They're not close, so I can't see them. But it builds up the scene of a town that is uh, very lively. Lots of things happening, you know. Uh, As well as that, I can say that uh, I'm hearing ducks as well, quacking. Quack, quack, quack. So there's obviously uh, there's obviously ducks around here somewhere. I don't know what we call a group of ducks. There's probably a name plethora of ducks, maybe. I'll need to check on that. Um, yeah, the sky is very grey, reminding me we're not quite at summer yet. Well, having said that, it's always grey around here. Uh, a little bit depressing, but uh, it's a good metaphor for learning English, because, of course, um, sometimes we all have days where our mind is is cloudy. And as we get older, learning, well, learning is more about 
uh, I think, feeling. It's no longer about words. It's more about having people to talk with, people who understand. It's no longer, I have a dog, and my brother's name is Sam. It's, it's more meaningful. And there are days um, when we just feel crowded, you know, crowded. Our, our, our minds are kind of crowded. And uh, that's a little bit hard, I think. Um, oh, there's a nice bush, a lovely bush there. I like this garden. I don't know who lives there, but uh, very purple. I love bright colors and they're hard to find here. So there's, uh, there's somebody living in that house who has a bright purple garden, which is beautiful. And it's the only thing around here which is uh, bright. Uh, even the car colors are dark. Uh, what else can I tell you? Yeah, so the general mood of the place is a little bit sad. Grey houses, grey sky. Uh, but protruding out of that is something purple, which is really nice. So very good, very good. Um, also, there's a college close by here. So there are students walking to the local shop to pick up sandwiches and rolls. And that just reminds me that this place isn't actually so different from other European cities, you know. People are leading their lives, and that's exactly the kind of things that we, um, we do every day. Oh, there's um, one of those shopping delivery vans. Yeah, that reminds me, I need to get my shopping delivered later this week. But uh, as I've often told you, um, for me, I don't really feel so comfortable with them because you're expected to unpack the bags yourself so I'm on the floor with the bags unpacking these crates while they simply watch me it doesn't seem right the balance of power isn't right there okay so now I'm walking under a belt of trees that's what we we you know call trees as a group uh, oh, they're low-hanging. You know, the, the leaves are very low-hanging these days. Uh, the governments usually come and cut them all back, uh, but they haven't done, so it's difficult to walk under them. And there's a new mobile transmitter sticking up there as well, um, which <laughs> they've obviously tried to disguise it as a tree by painting it green and putting branches on it, but frankly, it's awful <laughs> and uh, some people think they're dangerous I don't know about that but uh, some people do oh there's a familiar sign which is uh, Starbucks massive coffee shop chain so their luminous green sign is pointing up to the sky uh, reminding us again that uh, bright colors make us feel good and the only other bright color I'm seeing is the traffic lights, which are stuck at red right now. And a lot of impatient drivers waiting to get past. Now, what else can I tell you? Yeah, the balance of old and new is very interesting around here. Uh, there's a very old Victorian wall, which clearly has been there for decades. Well, more than decades. Decades are groups of 10 years, so we could say... Uh, maybe hundreds of uh, years. And that's been annexed by modern walls and modern shops. And it's just really interesting how the old meets the new. The same with the skyline. Um, I'm looking at the, the sign of the coffee shop, which is luminous green and white. And right behind it, there's some really ancient churches uh, and the whole thing contrasted together makes it look like a beautiful yet ever, yet ever changing landscape very nice, very nice and it's a real testament and affirmation of survival because uh, this place used to be very very industrial like most UK towns and villages and it's changed into a place where um, well, I suppose this, 
there's plenty to do here, but there's little work. I think many people travel out. And now with the advent of um, e-working and working at home, I think there's more people who are who are here um, doing different things, you know, like uh, computer programming and these things, or teaching from home, as I do. But very, very nice, very nice. Well, you can probably hear from the noise behind me that there's a lot of traffic. So I'm going to finish here, and I hope you've enjoyed this little description. See you all soon. Bye.